from the stage. At midnight tonight, couples across the capital will be tying the knot as gay marriage becomes legal. And it seems the milestone moment has caused a bit of competition between boroughs with Camden, Westminster and Islington vying to be the first to hear a gay couple officially take their vows. Nick Thatcher has more. Every groom wants to look their best on their wedding day, especially when the eyes of the world are watching. Sean and Sinclair are getting married in the morning, well, in the minutes after midnight to be precise. And in doing so, they'll become one of the first same-sex couples to tie the knot under new changes to the law. I think it's really important because marriage is such an old traditional institution and for us to be part of that is, is great because it's such a step forward, it's such a progressive step forward in the UK for, for us now to be able to do that. Um, I, think it's, I think it's really positive. And I know for me, you know, growing up, knowing that I wouldn't be able to marry the person that I love didn't make sense to me. And now the fact that you know, all this change is happen happening so quickly and I, and I can marry, marry the person I love, Sean, it means a lot. This evening, a rainbow flag flew above the Cabinet Office on Whitehall to mark the law change as London prepared for its first same-sex marriages. Here in Camden, as well as Islington and Westminster, there'll be ceremonies later tonight so that when the clock strikes midnight and the new law comes into force, the London boroughs can vie to be the first to host a same-sex marriage. Camden's mayor told me it wasn't a race to be first, but the midnight ceremonies would allow London to send a message to the rest of the world. We acknowledge the fact there's been a rich history in Camden and throughout London of campaigning on lesbian and gay rights. And it's really important that we, at the same time, we recognise what's going on in many other countries around the world who have an appalling record on human rights for lesbian and gay people. Andrew, Civil partnerships ring. between same-sex couples have been with us since 2005. But for some, this new definition of marriage is a step too far. It's going to have much wider uh, ramifications. I think freedom of conscience um, and freedom of religion is, is definitely going to be challenged. And actually, marriage doesn't give gay people anything that they didn't already have. For Sean and Sinclair, their midnight marriage will be a chance for family and friends to celebrate their relationship. And with a wedding reception planned for the early hours of the morning, it promises to be a night to remember. Nick Thatcher, ITV News, Camden. Richard Lane from the gay rights organisation Stonewall is here now. Thank you for coming in. We are on the cusp of a momentous occasion tonight. Absolutely. I think it's a historic moment in England and Wales. And for the first time ever, same-sex couples will be able to say that their relationships are valued and recognised in exactly the same way as their heterosexual friends and families. That's hugely significant. Stonewall originally campaigned for the civil partnerships. Why did you effectively back another horse and go down the line of joining in the campaign for gay marriage specifically? So I think civil partnerships were a hugely significant step forward because it showed people for the first time that gay relationships existed and they were every bit as loving and committed as, as anyone else. But a lot of people felt that they wanted to have access to this universally recognised institution of marriage that everyone values, everyone recognises as something really important to society. We've got both now, is that a tad bizarre? I think it'll be interesting to see how popular civil partnerships remain. We've seen in countries like New Zealand, for example, civil partnerships have de declined in popularity after the introduction of marriage. We do know there are some people who, who do want to retain civil partnerships and, and stay in it, and the government has pledged to review that in the future. England and Wales aren't leading the way around the world with this, but we are joining just a handful of countries, places around the world where, where this is legal now. That must be a great moment for gay rights in this country. I think it's a fantastic moment. I think Britain is a beacon for equality around the world and we're joining 15 other countries um, who have marriage equality. And it's really significant because this is the final piece of the legislative jigsaw for gay people in Britain. And we should be really proud and the politicians who led on this should be really proud of what they've done. There are those people who do uh, oppose it. There was a poll today saying one in five Britons wouldn't go to a gay marriage. What was your reaction when you saw those results this morning? My reaction was that four in five people are really looking forward to celebrating with gay couples and it's a shame that one in five will be missing out on what I'm sure will be some pretty fantastic parties. Children today talk about the fact that um, you can marry a woman if you're a girl and a boy can marry a boy. It feels like already it's become the norm even though it's not yet legal till midnight. Yeah and that's hugely significant. If you're growing up and you're lesbian, gay and bisexual to look around and say 
every option is open to me. I can love who I want to love and I can achieve whatever I want, regardless of my sexual orientation. Very briefly, who's going to win the race? Which borough is going to do that first marriage tonight? Oh, I wouldn't want to take bets, but I'm sure oh. there'll be a lot of competition for one minute past midnight. Richard Lane, thank you. You're watching the ITV News in London. Still to come, the boy soldier teaching a new